the survival mindset. Now, when I made this video, or when I had the idea for this video, it's taken me quite a bit of time in title, or thinking of the, the best title, and ultimately the best direction for this video, because I knew that I didn't want to just make a lackluster video that was half-assed, but I wanted to make something that was genuine and quality. And originally, I thought of calling this video, So You Want to Survive in Alaska. But as I continue to think more about the message of this video, I thought that this is really the ultimate rules that apply in from a mindset to all survival. Whether you're in Alaska, whether you're in the lower 48, whether you're in Hawaii, Australia, anywhere, these are the types of mindsets that you need to hold to make survival a reality or to buck the common trend of survival mindset in YouTube. Because on YouTube, there's such a high emphasis put on the physical stuff, stuff such as equipment, shelters, and physical crafts. And while there's absolutely nothing wrong with those elements to survival, what I've found in my own practice and what I've found in teaching other people survival and bushcraft is that once you have the mindset right, everything pretty much falls into place. Because once you can walk into the wilderness, you can see the opportunities before you, you can begin then to use your equipment that you have to facilitate those uh, reactions. You can facilitate those visions and turn them into realities. Now, this isn't going to be some form of motivational speech. This is really just the ultimate mindset of a survivalist. One that lives and doesn't die, for the most part. So, I broke it down into four basic pieces, and let's jump into those. So, the first one and one that actually wasn't on my radar until a little bit of reality, sobering reality, hit me was my number one now. And that is that before you go into a survival situation, when you find yourself in a survival situation, whenever that moment happens, you want to make sure that you're right with God, with your family, and with your friends. And the reason why I say this is because even though we train in practice and we have the right equipment or the right equipment, I have found in my own personal experience that real survival situations can strip all of that away. And real survival situations can go from zero, where you're just relaxing, being yourself, to life-threatening in a blink of an eye and in those types of situations we don't always have the proper time to recover and sometimes we honestly don't always make it so the truth the brutal truth to survival is that it is a risky game and we are fighting for our lives and sometimes we just don't make it we do sometimes die so the most important part of having the survival mindset is to honestly, to the greatest extent possible, make sure that you are right with God, with your family, and with your friends, those who you genuinely care about. Because in the end, in that survival situation, you may never make it out alive again. You may never be able to talk to them or tell them how you really feel again. So whenever you're going out, whenever you're doing anything survival related, even if it is just practice, Always make sure that you're on the right footing with all three. Because, like I said, there may be a chance, there may come a point where you never see any of them again. So that is my number one rule. And the most important, one that I've actually learned at a high cost. Now let's jump into more of the maybe applicable survival mindsets. So the first one, and one that I'm not going to take any necessary credit for, but Dave Canterbury talked about this years ago, and I still hold on to the name of it, but that is the coyote mindset. Now, the coyote as an animal is an animal of ingenuity. It's not a powerhouse, it's not a highly intelligent creature, but yet somehow it ends up thriving 
And I think the coyote mindset is a really good way of putting it because the coyote is a very versatile animal in, Latin, or in all of America. You will find them anywhere from the deserts of places like Utah and Nevada all the way to frozen Arctic regions such as Alaska. And when we talk about the coyote mindset, you don't necessarily have to be as scrappy as a coyote, but what it means is when you walk into the woods, it's about looking at your resources around you and being able to understand what is around you and being able to most importantly envision how you can use the resources that are surrounding you at this current point in time to affect your personal survival. So the coyote mindset, being able to see and use and understand what is around you, whether that is building resources, wild edibles, how to trap, how to hunt, and ultimately how to deploy the tools that you have in your toolkit, however vast or varied they are, to affect your survival with your surroundings. So the next is what I call the survival drive. Now, what do I mean by the survival drive? It's similar in the mindset to a coyote, but instead of looking for resources, it's that sheer willpower to survive. And what I mean by the survival drive is that in a lot of situations, including places such as Alaska, and even the deserts of Nevada and Utah, there will be extreme circumstances, whether it's extreme heat, extreme cold, that you have to have the willpower to muscle through. It's the deep down understanding that you're gonna get cold, you're gonna get hot, you are going to feel like you're going to die, you're going to be thirsty, you're gonna be hungry, but regardless to how those um, feelings or those needs hit you, you're going to have to have the drive to power through them. This is one that I find kind of hard to explain, but it's something that each good survivalist has, is just this ferocious willpower to go through whatever it takes to go to the end. And so the survival drive plays ultimately into the last point, which is will and purpose. And predominantly will and purpose is a long-term survival uh, mindset that we have to look at but ultimately you have to find whatever small thing in your current survival situation or in your future survival situation that gives you a purpose a will to live or a purpose to live it's something that's higher or above you that keeps you going it's that mindset that there are people looking for you, you will be found, <clears throat> and that your rescue is inevitable. It's thinking about your mental health and how you can continue to facilitate your overall well-being. Because if not, especially in long-term survival situations, if you don't have a will or a purpose of why you're still existing, oftentimes, even though you may have a setup that's functional and workable, you will break down mentally. Okay guys, so that is the essential mindset for survival. Whether you're in Alaska or whether you're anywhere else in the world, it really never changes. Even though the equipment may change, the environment may change, the reasons of why you've ended up in a survival situation may change. All of these are different variables that we sometimes have control over, we sometimes don't have control over, but, we have to make it work regardless to what we find ourselves in.